Hi guys, it's Parzival. I also go by Well, and I am back with another character babble. Apologies if this one sounds a little bit wig wiggly. I, I can't really words that well. It's very hot where I am. My room is the hottest room in the house, and I have a window open. I can't have a fan on because my microphone will pick that up. But it, it's very hot, so excuse me if words escape me right now. Um, but this is another character babble. As per usual, if you don't want to hear me talk because you don't like my voice, you don't want to hear what I'm talking about, you don't k give a crap about what I'm talking about, it's totally fine. Mute me, put on your own music, watch the speed paint. You're good to go. Um, for those who are sticking around, uh, I am going to be talking about my OC, Manuel. Uh, he is related to not last character battle, but the character battle before, Michelangelo Cruz. Uh, Manuel is Mikey's older brother. He is the older brother of Dean. And this art that I'm doing for him is actually a reference sheet for the group Compendium. And that is just a casual RP group that I stuck Manuel in. And, um, so yeah, this is the app art that I was working on. I worked with a preliminary sketch at first, and then I just sort of, um, played around with it. You can see here that I'm having trouble with the legs. I always seem to have trouble with how to pose legs. I can never figure it out. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, you can see my, my preliminary thumbnail here, and me spending way too much time trying to figure out how the legs are going to work out. <laughs> um, as for Manuel himself, he is actually, he used to be a very minor character in the RPs I was doing, because uh, I made him after I made Michelangelo. Technically, sort of, he existed as, like, family background. And if you remember a while ago, I made a video about tertiary characters and making sure they exist just in case you want to use them for something and elaborate on other things. And it will be like good just to have those background characters in case you want to develop them more later or if you want to use them for something. And that is sort of what Manuel was. Manuel was a tertiary character who just existed as part of my character Dean's backstory. Um, he existed because he uh, was the reason that Dean was so harsh to everyone. His brother had uh, been killed, and Manuel was basically a character who was dead on conception because he was there to have a character's motivations be the way they are. But then I, there was time travel shenanigans in the RPs, and Manuel ended up being a factor in the actual roleplay story where I had to play him as a person. And after that, it just sort of started happening where he slowly developed as a character, I used him uh, pretty consistently, and he turned into his own sort of concept. And... I really, really love Manuel as a character. He's very sort of trickster, fae-like. He, um, he is very important because he is authority, but he tries not to take that too seriously unless he absolutely has to. He prefers going undercover incognito, and he feels that authority is something he was forced into, not something he actually enjoys being. He's obligated into his role, not something that he shows but he also won't give it up because he is a responsible person who wants to do good for the world because he believes that at least in his position n uh, no one else can do that uh he was the first technically uncorrupt um politician in his line of succession for several generations and therefore he worked very hard at trying to make sure that he was going to be a worthy successor and a worthy ruler for his people. Um, unfortunately, as a result, he didn't really have a childhood because he was basically trained to be uh, the uh, prince or inheritor of the throne. Uh, basically, even though his country doesn't call it king and queen, it's basically a monarchy. Um, and so he didn't really have a childhood. His father was also very conservative, so he didn't really um, deal with uh, his own personal issues very well, such as the fact that he was queer. Um, and he, uh, even though he identified as gay and later bisexual, he just, he really sort of shoved all of those feelings down because he didn't want to worry about dealing with those sorts of things. Um... 
as a result, as an adult, he's kind of immature sometimes. He has a significant amount of moments of being just very petty, very childish, and uh, getting extremely offended by things that he really shouldn't be offended by. Uh, because he never really got to have that as a kid. He never got to have a childhood where he, like, could learn to deal with his emotions in a respectful and healthy way. So now sometimes when he has someone who specifically tried to provoke him, he will react instead of turning the other cheek and going, you know what, this isn't worth my time. He, he, is, he has canonically gone out of his way to go to another country just to show someone else up because he didn't like them because they beat him in a duel and he now considers them his arch rival it's kind of ridiculous um but he has a good heart and he has a lot of faith in people and even though he is prone to pranks and uh trying to like deal with things that are at least in like his opinion way out of his league he tries a lot and he wants to be a good person because his dad was a completely crappy person and he wants to be better than his dad which to be fair also goes back to him being spiteful and petty but fuels fuel motivation is motivation <laughs> he is a character not a person i mean he is a person he's he's my child but you know what I mean. He he is there to represent concepts and ideals and make people think, not to actually be a developed um, person who is sentient and has like actual human in real life uh, like con. <laughs> He's a character, not a person. That's the only way I can really describe that. I'm sorry, um, but yeah, I. Uh, he currently um, is still dead in his official storyline, but he is dead because his faith in humanity resulted in him sending away his advisors when he suspected there was going to be a coup, and he didn't want his advisors, who he saw as friends, to be hurt. And so instead of letting them do their jobs, he decided that he was going to risk his own life on his own instead of putting his friends in danger. And it ended up costing him his life. Um, and it also ended up in uh, his little brother, who he was trying to protect, becoming uh, more like his father that he didn't like. And more cold and callous and just kind of traumatized, frankly. Uh, and that's not exactly what he was planning but it's the result of what happened and he did try extremely hard to make a change but that was the reason that his country didn't particularly accept his rule he only ruled for uh, a couple years uh two to four i need to redo the numbers on that because i've also redone his age a couple of times before he was overthrown and then his advisors, who did a smart thing and didn't listen to him, came back uh, and dealt with the rebellion, uh, squashed it, and put his, uh, his little brother in charge. And by that, it was more, his little brother was a figurehead because he was only 17, and the eldest advisor, or rather the most experienced advisor, a character uh, named Abel, who I also want to do a character babble on, took over because he knew how to run a country. He had done it before in the past, and he hadn't done it for a while, but he was the most experienced out of all of them, so he did the majority of actually running the country while the, um, while the brother was learning the ropes. How hot is it? It is poisoning in here. It is 87 degrees. Goodness gracious. Now, like, admittedly, Manuel's environment is based on Spain, so it is rather warm there too, but... It is, it is 87 degrees where I am, and I'm sure it is hotter in my room because it is just boiling. Uh, but yeah, in uh, Compendium, so I'll talk about that for a little bit because I have about four minutes left. 
uh, compendium that I threw him in. It's a casual RP group that is basically like a bunch of AUs and stuff like that. And uh, while I'm not currently active because I'm working on other stuff right now, like getting my license, um, I am very much enjoying it. And he has been uh, so far. A human in an Animal Crossing world, and a tiefling in a fantasy world. And he, in the Animal Crossing world, he is the type of person to carry around a bug net and whack people with it uh, to make them go away, because he's that type of person. Um, in a Pokemon universe, he is a water type trainer and a champion of his region. Uh, in the fantasy AU, he is a tiefling, and that is because... Uh, when he was actually in his original universe, he does play a lot of Dungeons and & Dragons, and his first character that he made when he was 14 is a tiefling bard named Ambrose, who is basically a self-insert for him when he was 14, because that is how everyone's characters go, and he is absolutely the type when he's playing Dungeons and & Dragons to try and seduce the dragon, which his, his DM, who is my character Sandoval, uh, does not approve of, uh, there was also a situation where, uh, there was a city in, uh, Manuel's D&D campaign that was, uh, a, the city of Silver Spires, and later, uh, a couple years later, when they went back, because of Manuel, it was the, uh, the Desert of Silver Sands, because y you can't trust the chaotic neutrals. And that, that's definitely Manuel. Manuel is the chaotic neutral. He, he tries to be chaotic good. Uh, it's a little bit hard. Uh, he has habits that he got from his father that he can't really... Uh, he, he struggles with a lot. But he, he does try, and he wants to be a good person. And don't tell his younger brother, Dean, but he does have a son. His son is named Ruben. And his son is the son of also Dean's wife, Ada, uh, because Manuel and Ada had a fling, and then Ada met Dean and didn't know that he was related to Manuel, and the, there were shenanigans that happened, and it, it's real awkward. Um, I would say it's almost Hamlet-esque, except for the fact that uh, Man Manuel didn't... Uh, didn't tell anyone about his younger brother, and Dean didn't tell Ada about Manuel, so that wasn't on purpose, it was just an accident. Oops. But yeah, uh, I'm actually really happy with how this art turned out. I really like the posing, and I really like the uh, way it captures the character. I had to figure out a good way to present Manuel for this art, because I wanted it to be very him, and he's not super into work clothes, but he also doesn't really wear much besides his suit because it's just what he does. He is a very responsible person. He wears his suit all the time, but he's not a very stiff and stuffy person. So I decided for the actual art, I was going to have him just carrying his suit jacket over his shoulder because why not? It It's better than actually wearing it and it made him more casual without taking away his responsibility. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. As usual, uh, I will send you guys to the outro, but thank you guys so much for listening to my character babble. I'll see you guys soon. Well, that's the end of this video. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section, or contact me on any of my social media, which is linked in the description below. I also have my Patreon there if you guys want to throw a monthly donation at me. Thanks so much for your support. I'll see you next time. Bye!